Off shelf live foods destroy. Uh, has anybody heard of uh, Pottinger's cats? Yes. What is that now? Do you have? Okay, it's a study that they did back in the 30s. And uh, I, I got a, for whoever's interested in it, I got a handout on it so you guys can read the study. Um, I got five of them here, but I'll print out more if you want it. Um, but I am going to uh, just look over this real quick. So, what he did is he took 900 cats. Okay, this was in 10 years between 1932 and 1942. If you don't listen to anything else I say tonight, listen to this next five minutes, okay? This is critically important. 900 cats, okay? Fed half the cats, a control group, all raw foods, raw meat, raw milk, and raw cod liver oil, okay? The other half of cats, he fed them cooked meat, pasteurized milk, like that you'd buy at the grocery store, and the cod liver oil. The control group, the, the cats that were fed all the raw foods, were healthy, they had healthy kittens, and they checked them for four generations. They lived long lives, no disease, four generations of healthy kittens. Now think about how this relates to people. Okay, we're talking about animals here, but this, this study's been redone with other types of animals. Now think about humans for a while and what's going on in our culture right now and think what's happened just over the last two generations. The cats that were fed all cooked food and the pasteurized milk, the first round of kittens that they had were healthy. They looked generally healthy. But by the end of the lives of those first kittens, they started getting degenerative diseases. Okay? By the third generations, the unhealthy conditions increased. They started happening at a younger age, and many of them died before they were six months of age. There was no fourth generation. They were completely infertile within four generations. Think about, again, what's happening with humans right now. Everybody's freaking out because children are getting cancer at a younger age. Children are obese at a younger age. Children are diabetic at a younger age. So genetics absolutely plays a role, but genetics isn't a death sentence. You need to change your genetics. That's all there is to it. We just need to start being healthy again. Now what they found in these cats, they did some more studies, and what they did is that that third generation of cats, they started feeding them the raw food diet, the raw meat and the raw milk. It took them the same amount of generations to get back to being 100% healthy again. It took them four generations to get healthy again. But they were able to do it. Um, but what the things they noticed in, in the cats that were fed the cooked foods was increasingly poor eyesight with each generation, nearsightedness, farsightedness, heart problems, thyroid and bladder problems, nervous system disorders, meningitis, paralysis, infections of different organs, ovary and testicle problems, liver problems, inflammation, congestions in the uterus, atrophy of various organs. Now again, there was none of this in the, in the cats eating the raw foods. Um, each generation increasingly had ab more abnormal variations in their skeletal structure. They had parasites, lesions, and allergies continued to worsen with each generation, which we're seeing how bad allergies are becoming. We did a class on allergies last week. How long was this test? For 10 years? Uh, this was a 10 year study. Ten years. Uh, they had increasingly abnormal mental states. With each new generation of kittens, they were more unpredictable, more irritable, they bit and scratched more, and they were less playful. So that's what the kids do here. Exactly. Like I said, relate all this to what's going on in the human population right now. School, ADD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the final thing they noted was the failure of the reproductive system. Uh, the cats aborted 25% of the offspring in the first generation. They aborted 70% of the offspring in the second generation. Um, in all cases, delivery was difficult, and, and oftentimes the females died giving birth. And the kittens that were born were 19 grams less than all the kittens on the raw food diet. And then again, there was no fourth generation, completely infertile. No. It's just, it's mind boggling. And it's, it's, it's just, you can say it's cats, but it's just a testament to what's going on in our culture right now. We are pigs. 
we need to change it. We are the pigs. <laughs> they actually did a, the same study on pigs. That you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because um, I think I'm a guinea pig. You know, they keep testing products on me. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing happened. They did the same thing with pigs. What they found was interesting about the pigs is it only took them one generation to completely regain their health. Which oh, that's pretty that's fascinating. Good news. They did the study on rats. Uh, the study on the rats, and they've done a lot of studies with this, with feeding uh, white flour to animals versus whole grains. They've done that with calves and all different kinds of animals. But they did it with rats, um, same thing, um, except the rats that were fed the white flour could not reproduce, they were aggressive and hostile, and they had regular tooth decay. And the rats that were waged on whole wheat had no, no health problems whatsoever. Um, and then one other study they did um, with the cats is what they did is they fed cooked meat, but they gave them one third of the diet raw and two thirds cooked just to see if it made a difference. They had the exact same results. And like the exact same bad results. The exact same bad results. So a right. third wasn't enough. So we need right. to do better than sixty-six. Well, again, and, that, and that's kittens. You know, I mean, you don't know how to compare that to humans. That's why I say we should shoot for at least fifty-fifty. You know, ideally eighty-twenty, but at least fifty-fifty. We got to get some raw living foods, you know, into our body. And you know, we could get into a whole sidetrack on that. But I just want to say real quick, if you if you become a raw foodist, that's great. You better know what you're doing. Um, that's why I say eighty-twenty is ideal. We live in Kansas City, and it gets really dang cold here, and there's a lot of snow. My first winter back last year, after living in Vegas for seven years, was not pleasant. So I prefer to eat some cooked foods and some soups and some warming foods in the wintertime, and that's totally fine. But again, it's all about balance. Aloxin and white bread, I mean, this is just a, a chemical that they add to white bread that uh, is known to shut down the pancreas and cause diabetes. And the reason they add it to the white bread is to make it look fluffy and clean and pretty. Nice area. Yep. The whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. Okay, Dr. Weston Price. Anybody studied or heard or know about his work? A couple of you. This guy is a fascinating man. If you want to get some invaluable information about health, Look up Dr. Weston Price and the, the Price Foundation. Um, just Google it, search it, get on his website, and it will blow you away. But what's really cool what he did is he went and studied cultures all around the world. He was actually a <coughs> dentist. So he was really fascinated to see what people's teeth looked like in other cultures that lived, had different ways of life, that ate different foods. Did they have cavities? Did they have periodontal disease? Did they have infections? Did they get root canals? All these different things. These are some of the places he went. He went to the Swiss Alps, Fiji, Eskimos, Indians, a lot of different Native American populations, uh, Native pe people in, in Scotland, and people in Hawaii. Now again, this is the 1930s. Okay. What he found was he was totally shocked that he found that each of these culture groups who were totally different and unique. I mean, Eskimos are eating whale blubber and seal, and Hawaiians are eating fruit, and totally different diets, totally different lifestyles. None of them had cavities. None of them had any kind of periodontal disease, gum disease, no tooth problems whatsoever. He even checked um, some remains of past generations to check their you know, perfectly formed uh, jaws, no problems with their jaw bones, nothing in all these different cultures. Now, of course, what's interesting is every one of these cultures, which is almost, well, probably all of them now, where American westernized food has been introduced, they get all the same diseases we get. They get cavities, they get heart disease, they get cancer, they get diabetes. It's pretty obvious.